Today's Kansas City Chiefs report is sponsored by Mint Mobile. They offer plans starting at just $15 per month on the largest LTE 5G network out there. Go check them out. Save some money today at mintmobile.com slash chat sports. That is mintmobile.com slash chat sports. All right, uh, got some news to get to. Actually filmed an entire video, uh, but wanted to add this on top of it. Justin Ross has been placed on injured reserve, which will end his rookie season before it even begins. He had foot surgery recently. So not to toot my own horn here, but what did I say a few days ago? Ah, he could be an IR stash. After we saw that photo of him in, in a boot, that appears exactly to be the case. This isn't surprising. Uh, this is a guy with an extensive injury history. You don't want to rush him back. So IR stash him. It's a win-win for everybody. Ross still gets to be on uh, involved, gets to rehab with these trainers and, and uh, doctors uh, and recover in Kansas City. He still gets paid as well. It's a win-win, and then hopefully you get him healthy for next year, and he's a part of this now with his injury history. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if that happens. But the one thing it does mean is, you know, Okay, uh, he's out of the fold now. Josh Gordon, that probably helps his chances. Cornell Powell, Darius Fountain, Justin Watson all should be licking their chops like, okay, that's one less guy we got to worry about to try and make this 53-man roster. But for Ross, obviously another setback, obviously a disappointment. Again, hopefully. So I want to ask you this question. Will Justin Ross ever play for Kansas City? Type 1 for yes, or you can type 0 for no. The Cheetah. Tyreek Hill, is he missing Kansas City? Well, he joined ESPN's first take and talked about his trade to Miami, talked about Tua, Mahomes, a bunch of things. Uh, this is a quote that really ca caught my eye here, and I wanted to bring it to you guys. And by the way, he was wearing wild sunglasses on the show today. Devontae Adams broke the bank with the Raiders. He, talking about his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, called me and was like, we got to get the Chiefs on the phone and make something shake. I told him, Drew, I don't want to break up something special. Obviously, I have goals of my own. Let's at least make, uh, maybe not top it, but get somewhere close to it. The Chiefs were nowhere close to the Devontae Adams deal, and that's really where it broke down. It broke my heart when I had to sign in Miami. So, once again, and this has happened several times since Tyreek Hill got traded to the Dolphins back in, what, March now, that he has gone out of his way to talk about the Chiefs and talk about uh, you know, whether or not he wanted to stay in Kansas City, which it continues to look like he did. I think Tyreek Hill misses the Chiefs really badly. <laughs> like, I think he really, really wanted to be in Kansas City. He has said so. He said, hey, I want to be in KC. I mean, Chris Mad Dog Russo flat out asked him to have first take, like, hey, if the money was close, would you have stayed? And he said, yeah, I'd be in Kansas City right now. Um, he wanted to stay uh, in Kansas City, uh, but the Chiefs wouldn't budge. Uh, it sounds like they got to a price and uh, they wouldn't go above it. And Tyreek said, well, you know, uh, I'm going to go take top dollar in Miami. And he's got to live with that decision. But uh, I think the Cheetah is maybe second guessing himself a bit because, hey, the numbers he put up with Patrick Mahomes and briefly before that Alex Smith, very impressive through six seasons. I mean, he basically averaged 1,100 yards and 11 and uh, 10 touchdowns every year. I mean, that's that's hard to find elsewhere. We'll see if he's able to replicate those numbers with Tua Tungavaloa. I have my doubts, but we shall see. Now, another reason why I think Tyree Kill uh, misses Kansas City is he keeps projecting with Tua. Like, he says stuff like, uh, you know, today, Tua's the most accurate QB in the NFL because they were asking him why he chose the Dolphins over the Jets. He said, Zach Wilson's a dog, but I wanted to play with the most – accurate quarterback in the league and then he said hey similarities between Mahomes and Tua I see him all the time and I'm like what similarities Mahomes is bigger has a stronger arm he's proven in the NFL Tua's none of those things doesn't mean Tua can't be good but he's proven nothing in the National Football League look this is my overall thought on all this best of luck to Tyree Kill the memories were great I'll be honest, at the time of the trade, I wasn't a fan and I'm not necessarily even a fan now but I've moved on I feel like the Chiefs have moved on I don't feel like Tyree Kill has moved on. He keeps bringing it up, talking about how he would have stayed in Kansas City. How if the money was close, he would have been a Chief. He, it was a special thing going on. Yeah, it was special, but the Chief said it's not $30 million per year special. So that is what happened there, and uh, best of luck to him. We'll see if Tua uh, can get him the rock just as well as Patrick Mahomes did. So I think Tyree Kill misses the Chiefs. I think that's pretty clear. The question is, does Chiefs Kingdom, you guys, Miss Tyreek Hill.
Type Y for yes. Type in for no. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. Do you miss Tyree Kill? Y for yes or in for no. All right, a little bit of a roster move coming down the pike late last night, earlier today. Evan Kazirzak, I think that's how to pronounce it. I looked up a couple of interviews. Kazirzak uh, signing with Kansas City, uh, 2020 undrafted free agent. We can talk, kind of talk about his path, offensive lineman uh, here. Uh, played for the University of Buffalo, uh, wrong logo there. Uh, my mistake, uh, producer Trace. Uh, played his college ball at the University of Buffalo. Was a UDFA signing out of uh, for the Atlanta Falcons, gets cut, bounced around a couple of practice squads last year, Washington and Buffalo, uh, and then has now signed with Kansas City. Uh, you know, you, you look at the depth chart, uh, obviously the Orlando Brown stuff is going on, more on that in a little bit, but you know, this is a camp body, depth signing. He hasn't really stuck in the NFL. Maybe uh, the Chiefs see some developmental pinch, uh, potential. I did read that they uh, talked to him at – one of the senior bowl games, it wasn't the senior bowl, but I think it was the East-West Shrine game after uh, the 2019 college season. So there was some interest uh, in him coming out of Buffalo. But this is a camp body. This is not a real threat to make the active roster. But if Orlando Brown's not at training camp, you need extra guys uh, that can step in and take some reps. So this is kind of how I view this, an opportunity for him uh, to uh, show the Chiefs what he's got uh, as he progresses in his career. Now, Mint Mobile is today's sponsor, and I've been thrilled since I switched my phone plan over because prices are going up everywhere. Infl inflation is something uh, that's impacting us all, and Mint Mobile, uh, the cell phone provider, is fantastic because it's on the largest LTE 5G network, unlimited talk and text, which a lot of providers don't even uh, offer these days. You get free mobile hotspot as well. Here's the key, though. Plans starting at just $15 per month. A lot of phone bills these days, over 100 bucks. Mint Mobile, not so fast. It's a lot more affordable. The benefits are, are fantastic, and you can get started today at mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Cool thing, too, a lot of people slide my DMs like, Harrison, but I like my phone. I, I don't want to change my phone number. I'm in the same boat. They will send you an eSIM card, which is a digital SIM card, and when you switch, you can do it all online. In about 20 minutes, you're on a new provider, and you are ready to go. Same phone, same phone number. Don't have to go into a store and wait in line. You can do it all online. Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Go check it out. Plans starting at just $15 per month. All right, uh, let's talk more training camp for the Chiefs. Here's the latest. Uh, we discussed a little bit on Sunday, but uh, a little further here. Rookies, quarterbacks, and players coming off injury reported on Saturday. A couple of light practices took place uh, before veterans report tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, and then the first full practice will uh, take place on Wednesday the 27th. So that's really when training camp ramps up. So 24, 48 hours from now, uh, we'll kind of know who all's in the building and what all is going on. So I kind of wanted to go through a few storylines here as training camp is going to ramp up here. Obviously, number one, Orlando Brown watch. Will he report? Will he not? Uh, Andy Reid uh, said, I don't know if Brown will report. We'll be ready to go with or without him. Uh, I don't really know what the upside is to him not reporting other than avoiding an injury during training camp, but he has to play this year if he wants to earn a bigger contract next offseason. So sure, maybe he'll hold out of camp, but I'm not overly worried because if he's not there week one, it's not like the Chiefs can negotiate a contract right now. They cannot resume negotiations until after this season uh, since he is under the franchise tag, but he has not signed that tender yet, uh, which means he can avoid fines during camp. Will Orlando Brown report at the start of training camp? What do you guys think? Type R for report, type W for he will not. Um, I'm going to say he probably won't be there at the beginning of training camp, but uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. All right, uh, storyline number two at training camp, the wide receiver competition. So, I mean, obviously, uh, you, you don't have Tyreek Hill, which we just – Talked about once again. Uh, but I'm excited to see what these guys can do. Juju, Valdez Scantling, Hardman, Sky Moore, Josh Gordon. Now Justin Ross is banged up right now, but Cornell Powell reportedly had a good practice over the weekend. Darius Fountain uh, had a good uh, camp last year to earn an initial roster spot. Some other guys in the mix, Justin Watson could be a name to watch. So excited to see what these guys do at the wide receiver position. And I'll continue to repeat it. You may not have a true number one, but since you have Travis Kelsey, maybe you don't need a true number one. Maybe you just need three, four, five guys that can contribute on any given Sunday. So I'll be fascinated to see 
if some of these guys separate themselves from the rest of the pack and a top two or three guys emerges. Rookies, hey, listen, um, I think training camp is really the first time we get a close, close look at rookies. Sure, there's rookie minicamp, OTAs, yada, 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 uh, but the pads aren't on until training camp. We'll get to see how Sky Moore runs around with the pads. You know, uh, is George Karloff, this is going to be ready for a big role. Trent McDuffie at the cornerback position. Brian Cook, could he push for a role in the secondary. Uh, I think Kansas City's relying on a few guys. I just mentioned a couple of them. McDuffie and Karloftis, I think, are going to be day one starters. They need to be ready to go. Sky Moore is a guy who has a chance to contribute. I think Leo Chanel is a player to watch out for as he uh, bounced back uh, from a tough uh, first practice uh, in which he had some heat exhaustion issues, made an interception the next day. So uh, these rookies are going to have a chance to compete, and uh, they have a lot to prove because, uh, you know, a lot of these vets have been there and done that. Subscribe to the Chiefs Report because we are trying to reach 31,000 subscribers before the first preseason game, which I believe is on August 13th. So got about two and a half, three weeks until we get, get there. So help us out. Just over 300 subs away. So hit that big red button. We will have training camp videos just about every single day. All right, uh, my last one is, do the Chiefs have enough at defensive end? Uh, I, we'll see, right? We'll get to see these guys throw the pads on, run around, and uh, – uh, see what they can bring to the table. I think they're asking George Karloftis a lot, the rookie out of Purdue, because I think he's probably going to start. Uh, Frank Clark on the other side, you need him to be a big contributor. Michael Dana, hopefully he takes a step forward. I still have my doubts that they have enough at this position, but that could be what training camp's for, to see who is ready to go, and if they feel like, oh, crap, we need another pass rusher, maybe Brett Veach will sign somebody or go and make a trade. So uh, those are some storylines to watch as camp gets underway this week, and uh, I, for one, cannot wait to see some real Chiefs football. What's the number one training camp storyline for you? I just went through a few. I think it's Orlando Brown, but uh, if you guys disagree, let me know down in the comments. Top training camp storyline for the Chiefs this year. Be sure to follow me on Twitter because I'll have some training camp updates over there as well. At HGramNFL, at HGramNFL. Same handle for Instagram, by the way, if you want to check me out over there. So go ahead, follow me on social media, on Twitter, at HGramNFL.